Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship, whether we're gathered in church or whether you're watching us or joining us via our streaming this morning. We welcome each one of you to this service and we pray that you will feel the presence of Almighty God with us today. And so our call to worship I've taken from Psalm 26 and I'm reading the first three verses. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is ever before me, and I walk continually in your truth. Amen. And so we turn to our first hymn this morning, Ye Servants of God to the Tune Hanover. Almighty and all-loving God, as we gather together here and via our streaming this morning, we would bring you our praise. We would offer you this worship as we gather together. And as we gather together, we open our hearts to you. We would tell of all that you mean to us. And as we worship you here, and as we leave here later on to go into our everyday lives, we would proclaim your name. Eternal and all-powerful God, there's a desire, a deep desire in each one of us to be able to meet with you. And that desire is there because we want to hear your voice and know your will. We want to learn more about you. We want to offer you a commitment that 
does justice to your love for us. Gracious and all-forgiving God, as we gather here today, help us to acknowledge our faults, to be able to confess our sins before you and look at our lives and to be able to recognize our weaknesses, to be able to see all that is wrong in our lives and to be people people who do justice to your mercy great and all transforming God we pray that as we meet with you here you would enable us to serve you more faithfully to love you more deeply to know you more fully in our lives and to obey you more completely and live in a way that just justice to your renewing power. Everlasting God, you know what we are and you know what we want to be. And so as we meet, we pray that you would receive this, our act of worship. And so help us to become the people you would have us be to the glory of your great name. And as we meet together here, Sovereign God, we confess to you with shame that sometimes, all too often, we've been guilty of the sin of pride. We've thought of ourselves more highly than we should, boasting sometimes in our own achievements looking down at those around us. When you have spoken to us, we haven't always listened as we should to your voice or to the voice of others, so often believing that we know what's best, so often preferring our own way and trusting in our own judgment. And as we bow our heads and we confess that we have been guilty of pride in more subtle ways. Trying to perhaps be independent of those around us. Hiding our frailties behind a mask of self-sufficiency. Denying our fears and refusing support. Sovereign God, forgive us when we try to live life alone. Forgive us that so often we think more of ourselves than of you when we put ourselves before others. We pray that as we come before you in our confession that you would give us true humility and true loneliness of heart. The ability to take proper pride in ourselves when it's due, but a, a willingness to be able to listen to your voice and the voice of others. Accepting our faults. Recognising our limitations and confessing before you our mistakes. And so as we come before you, Sovereign God, we pray now that you would have mercy upon us through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we come before you with our spoken prayers, so we now gather those prayers up, as together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen i have a meditation that I'm going to read out this morning. It's nice sometimes to do 
something a little bit different. So this meditation is from a book called Seeing Christ in Others, um, an anthology for worship, meditation, and mission. I've had it many years. I've used it many, many times over the years. But this one that we're reading today is entitled Walk Among Us Jesus. Look at the world. Look at each other. See the pain and see the tears. See the face of Jesus. Wounded people, angry people, hungry people and thirsty people. We see broken people everywhere. We see them, we hear them shouting and crying, brothers and sisters together in the one family of God. Walk on the battlefield. Talk to the soldiers. Reconcile the leaders and console the mourning families as you reveal yourself to us today for the world to see your peace. Walk our city streets, talking to the lost, healing the broken-hearted and giving new hope as you reveal yourself through us so the world may know your presence. Walk in our darkness with a light to show the way, forgiving hardened hearts reaching those rejected and giving strength in weakness as you reveal yourself through us today so the world can see your love. Walk into our churches opening locked doors so people may find you, know you and hear you and lift up your cross to follow you out so the world may know the truth you have revealed. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. Our next thing.
so we'll now take up our offering for the work of God in this church and that will be followed by our scripture reading. Gracious Lord, as we bring ourselves this morning to you, we pray that you will accept us and that you will bless us. And as we bring our gifts of money before you for the furtherance of your work in this church and in this community, we pray that you would accept those gifts too. And as you accept the gifts and as you accept us, we pray now you would bless us and send us forth. For these prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from the book of Ephesians, beginning to read in chapter 2 from verses 1 to 9, made alive in Christ. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who was rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming ages he might show the incurable riches of his grace, expressed in kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by words so that no one can boast. And this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. God's Spirit is in my heart. We join in our next hymn. God's Spirit is in my heart.
Well, he did very well singing those that have got no music to. There may be another one yet, I don't know. There is another one yet. You're doing very well. You're doing very well. A few days ago, I went off to the seaside, down to Abergelly, then on to Colwyn Bay. Took Rusty for his first real walk on the beach and in the sea. Walked along the beach, saw a seagull, ran towards the sea and didn't realise that the land stopped and the sea started. So ended up going into the water. Had a lovely walk down the sand. Beautiful walk. And I'm sure over the years many of you have had similar walks where you've gone to the seaside and you've just walked and walked along the sand. But as we were walking along the sand, I looked back. I could see my footprints, but I could also see Rusty's paw prints. And I noticed something which made me think. What I noticed was that as we were leaving our footprints and paw prints, I could see that they were of different depths. On the soft sand, footprints, very deep because you sink in a bit more as the sand became harder then less of a footprint was left because when we decided to walk up over the rocks the very hard sand compacted sand footprints were not visible at all I looked on the sand and wondered how long they would be there until the tide came in or somebody rubbed those footprints out, perhaps walking over them and making their own footprints. Now many years ago, I had the privilege of attending my sister's graduation in Manchester. And we were sat on the balcony around the top. Had a wonderful view of all the graduates seated below bedecked in their fine academic robes, waiting to be called by name to go onto stage and to receive their handshake, just as new ministers do. We go on stage and we too are given a handshake. Looking at all those people gathered, I wondered what footprints they would make and leave behind as they began to move through their lives. Some were young graduates and some were mature students, but all now starting off into different directions in their lives. This led me to think of the footprints that I have made and their effects on other people's lives. And by affecting their lives, so change the footprints they themselves leave and cause and effect. I wonder how many footprints you have made in your life and what type of footprints did you make? And what type of footprints are you making now? And what of those whom we loved who have now gone to glory? We think of the footprints, their footprints, that they have left behind. And how their footprints and their imprints have affected each of our lives. Too many times in society, footprints are left by others who believe they are leaving footprints as directed by God, but in fact are being led by another. 
Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2, you were following the course and fashion of this world, were under the sway of the tendency of this present age, following the prince of power of the air, and you are obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit. In today's world, all we seem to do is follow the present trends that are around us and influence our understandings and our lives. I began to think how God can be involved in all the things that are going on in the world today. I know God involved in us and through us is leaving the right type of footprint. For it's how we as Christians and it's how as Jews or Muslims or Sikh who believe in one God, Hindu and Buddhists with their individual beliefs, leave the right kind of footprint. We each try to leave a footprint of peace. We leave a footprint of peace. That always doesn't happen. We should strive to leave footprints of peace. A while ago I was reading about some very old footprints that were found in some rock. Those who had made them had long since gone of course. Might even have been in one of your magazines Lorraine. But the impressions that they had made were still there. They hadn't gone away. Those were just footprints that were made in sand and by sheer luck made into rock by the passage of time. Well, our footprints must be made of rock also, the rock, before we begin to leave our impressions behind in our lives, our living and others' lives. And when they are made in the true rock, that foundation stone which the world rejected, that which is Jesus, Jesus Christ our Lord, then there is nothing that can erase those footprints if they are made in and through Jesus Christ. You might say, well, if you walk on rock, you don't leave an impression. How can you? It's solid. It doesn't give. Well, do leave impressions and forensic science could prove that maybe very faint but a part of you has been left behind you left your impression and when you leave your impression that has in itself been touched by the very hand of God through the faith we have well, what an impression that is that we leave behind you might say it is an indelible impression. I was going to put and ask Alice to read a verse for Corinthians, but I've changed it, I'm going to read it instead. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. And Paul, in his letter to Corinthians, asks each of us a question. Who makes you different from everyone else? Or who makes you different from everyone else? I suggest that the others are those who indeed have not truly found God acting in their lives. Those who are not influenced by the very hand of God. Unlike ourselves who by the grace of God and the leadership of our Lord Jesus Christ have been separated from everyone else. Separated blessed so that all we do we do in the Lord's name all we say to encourage to direct leave an everlasting imprint on their lives an imprint which will last as long as this world lasts an imprint of Christian peace and love the psalmist in our call to worship at the beginning of worship said, Examine me, Lord, and prove me and test my heart and mind. And this is something we 
as those who have been set aside should do. We should be constantly asking God to examine us and to test us, to test our hearts, to test our minds. Something that sometimes is a difficult thing to do. So that all we do for God has been checked by him and found to be that which he calls us to do. And may we, through the testing or the trials we sometimes call them, the examination, be found to be true followers and even ministers, for we all are called to minister of our Lord Jesus Christ remembering his footprints are true and eternal who by following our Lord and Saviour may set in stone footprints that will last for as long as our Lord God wills. Amen. O Jesus I have promised, and this is to the more modern tune, a bit quicker, something a bit different, so you have to keep up with it.
Let us pray. And so let us now gather in our prayers of intercession before the God who knows each of us by name. Father, we thank you that your church is made up of real people, that it is a school for sinners, and that you can work with us and through us straight away. Father, this morning as we meet, we pray for those who have recently found you, or perhaps those, Lord, who have returned to you. We ask, Lord, that you would enable us to help them and to support them and delight in them together as the body of Christ. Father, we pray as we meet for your strength and protection against all hypocrisy and double standards in our society. We pray for a spirit of genuine service among all who lead and in all areas where we have authority. Father, we pray that you will make our homes and our relationships, places where people know, by the way we look at them and we treat them, that they are valued and cherished and respected for who they are. Father, as we call to mind all who have learned to regard themselves with contempt, I pray that you would draw near to them and whisper their true name so that they discern the truth of your love and respect for them. We pray for the dying, for those who have recently died, commending them to your joy and safekeeping of your love. Heavenly Father, as we gather this morning, we realize that the world is in somewhat of a mess. Your peace hasn't quite reached all the corners yet. There's fighting and warfare and bitterness. And that's only in our families. Without the fighting and warfare and bitterness that's in this community, that's in this town, that's in this city, in our country, in the world, We do pray that we may be messengers of peace and love. That you will especially bless us as we leave here shortly. That that peace and that love would overflow from us. That others may come to know that if they too have your love and peace in their lives, they would overflow with it too. And we think of places like the Ukraine and many other places where fighting and warfare is carrying on. We pray for all our brothers and sisters around the world, wherever they may be, in whatever circumstance they may be, that they would know your love, that they would know your peace. And in a moment of quiet reflection now and silent prayer, let's bring before God those things which lie heavy on our hearts. Heavenly Father, we bring the spoken and the unspoken prayers to you. And we bring them in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is We Are Called to Be God's People.
now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and even forevermore. Amen.